Manhattan every year from September through May. And it's called the Dolphin Drive. They're called the Dolphin Drives. Um, I became aware of this after I published my paper on mirror self-recognition. People who had been working to stop this situation approached me and asked me if I would speak out about this. When I found out about it, I could hardly believe what I was seeing. And since 2001, I've been working diplomatically and politically trying to convince the Japanese government to put an end to this because it's so inhumane. We got nowhere. After going to the embassy in Japan, they just turned a blind eye. Finally, I was very fortunate to meet Louis Sohoyas, who was the director of the Cove at a marine mammal conference where I was giving a talk about this. And I begged him to do a film about this, thinking the only way we would bring an end to this drive is by having it recognized publicly, because this was a deep, dark secret that the Japanese were hiding from the rest mm -hmm. of the world. You can't get in there to film. And I felt that this was the only way people would do something about it if enough people saw it, if enough people in Japan found out, and we could make a change from within as well. Could you describe for us what actually happens in the cove? What happens in, the, in this dolphin drive hunt, as it's called, and it is a hunt, and it is a slaughter, and it's very graphic when you see it. On, 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 let me try to explain it. Fishermen go out to sea in boats, and generally there are a few boats that head out into the open ocean, and they round up, they find groups of dolphins. These are, very, these are highly social groups with mothers and calves and, and animals of different ages that stay together because they're dependent on each other for their survival. They bang on pipes that they hold over the boat, and by banging on these pipes, they create an acoustic net or an acoustic barrier out at sea that, and they use this just like they might use a physical net to move the dolphins into a very small cove in Taiji. This, this method is called the Oikomi method, and I know it well because I used this in the rescue of a big humpback whale in San Francisco many years ago. We used it for good purposes, so I know exactly how it works. Dolphins will move away from sound barriers like this. So once they're herded and rounded up, they're moved into this lagoon in this bay where they can be kept for a few days, a few hours, or they can be killed fairly quickly. What the fishermen do now is they tie the individual animals by their tails and have them fairly well immobilized on the, sh on the beaches. They used to eviscerate them by slitting their stomachs. And you'd see these animals. I don't want to get too graphic here, but people should hear what really happens. They were ripped apart, eviscerated, and they would be flailing. I, I watched an animal 15 minutes for 15 minutes flailing, struggling for its life with blood spurting out. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to believe any human being could do this to another being, be it a human or an animal. Um, and now what they're doing is because of the controversy that, and the footage of the, co the coverage of the cove where you see these lagoons filled with blood of these animals, what they're doing now is they're wrapping their tails, holding them immobilized, and then they take a metal rod and shove it into their heads. So th they think that they're rendering them unconscious or dead, but they're not. It's actually the most horrific thing you've ever seen. And with the dolphin, their brains are organized in such a way that they're, what they're doing is they're damaging their brains. Functionally, you have an animal that's alive with its brain damaged, and, it's, and if anything, it's been immobilized. This is horrendous. Yeah. Once they do that, they're now hammering in wood spikes, wood stakes, into the hole that they've created so the blood doesn't flow out into the ocean. It sounds unbelievable. I just spent hours looking at this footage. It's a nightmare. So if we can't stop this as a global group of people, I don't know what we're going to stop. This is a no-brainer. Where are we in trying to prevent this uh, roundup murder of dolphins, and what remains to be done? Yes, so the, uh, the, the film The Cove has not stopped this. I want to make that clear. We're going to really need to have what I call a sea change, uh, not to make a pun here, but there's going to have to come, the change is going to have to come from within Japan as well as from without Japan. But I think there's going to have to be a lot of global pressure. We have a petition on a website, Act for Dolphins, that I started. You can look for it, actfordolphins.org. It's scientists and zoo and aquarium professionals speaking out about this drive along with other groups. Now, you, you've done a good deal of work with aquariums as well. How, how do they come off? Yeah. One of the things that was missed in the film, The Cove, was that um, scientists and 
aquariums in our country, in the United States, as well as the World Association for Zoos and Aquariums. This is the accredited body of professionals who work with animals, have spoken out strongly about this drive, condemning it. Uh, they've written letters to the Prime Minister of Japan condemning it. The World Association of Zoos and Aquariums has been over to Japan to try to get the Japanese aquariums to not take from the drive and also to work with us to stop the drive by talking to the government. It hasn't been very successful. So there's a battle within the aquariums. And I think what's been lost in the film is that it's not all aquariums that take from the drive. Many of the aquariums, and specifically the aquariums in the United States, and even this World Association of Zoos and Aquariums has strongly condemned this. And it's this group of renegade aquariums in China and Japan and Dubai and Turkey and that are doing this. And there's some other places as well. And we have got to put pressure on stopping any aquarium from doing this. Aquariums are supposed to be speaking out on behalf of dolphins, educating the public. Any aquarium who takes from a drive puts a black mark on every aquarium. And are there enough uh, dolphins being born in captivity to satisfy the needs of aquariums for shows and so on? Yes, and most aquariums are moving away from doing dolphin shows into education and conservation. And the messages that aquariums should be giving out are strong conservation messages, messages about how to protect their environment and these animals. And looking, for, looking at issues about welfare, like this situation in, in Japan. Many aquariums are working through their big organizations, but I don't see a lot of effort coming from many of the individual aquariums yet, and I'm trying to change that. If you have animals like dolphins, which are intelligent, isn't there an ethical issue that's involved in killing them and in, in rounding them up for use in aquariums? Well, this is a, this is a topic that's also very, that's very important. I think there are a couple of issues here. First, one is what we know, we know what the science, we know the science. And we know these animals are intelligent. We know they're sentient. We know they can experience great pain and suffering. They're also quite susceptible to ulcers in the wild as well as in aquarium. This is not just in an aquarium. They're susceptible to ulcers. So are great apes. And one of the issues that it comes forth immediately is the ethical issue. What do we do if we know that these animals are intelligent? Now, great apes are also intelligent, and they're, they, they're still in zoos. Elephants are intelligent. They're in zoos. Many animals are intelligent. This is one measure of intelligence. I think the more important issue, at least for me, is protecting them and their habitats. I mean, these are animals that are in the wild. These are harvests that are the most inhumane treatment of animals. You couldn't treat a mouse like this in a laboratory. I can tell you for a fact, mice are protected from being killed in front of other mice, and it has to be done humanely. There are, there's all sorts of uh, there are all sorts of uh, laws to protect farm animals. They're not always the best yet, but they're getting better. So this is a case that is so extreme, and to be seeing this happen with these extremely intelligent animals is unbelievable. So as a scientist, I feel that it's my responsibility to be speaking out and working as an advocate in this arena now. For more Newsmakers, visit CUNY Radio online at cuny.edu radio. Newsmakers is a production of the Office of University Relations.